Let's solve a couple of literal equations. Again, literal equations are those equations that have you solving for variables in terms of other variables. I would like to put the k on the left here over 1 and then multiply through by the least common denominator of f in order to cancel the f's on each side. This is going to give us kf is equal to ma and then dividing the m off of each side we have a is equal to kf over m. And a little note about literal equations, make sure you pay attention to the difference between a capital and a lowercase letter when you are working with these. On number 8, the least common denominator that we're going to multiply through by is the sum r plus r. And notice we have to pay attention to these capital letters. This first denominator is a 1. So on the left, we're going to have capital I times capital R plus little r equals capital E. Distributing on the left, we are going to have, actually, let's not distribute on the left. Let's instead divide off the I because that will just give us the r plus r on the left the way we want it. r plus little r is equal to capital E over capital I. Now solving for little r, we can subtract the capital R off of each side and have capital E over capital I minus capital R as the solution for this problem. Now I'd like to call something to your attention here. Back when you first learned to solve equations, you learned that whenever you had something like 8x is equal to 16, you could divide both sides by 8 and you'd have x is equal to 2. And that was a true statement. But what happened is you thought to yourself, gee, I'm allowed to divide on both sides of an equation as long as I'm doing the same thing to both sides. That is a true statement. However, I want to caution you. You are not allowed to divide both sides by variables because when you start dividing by variables, you tend to lose solutions. Let's take a look at what I mean right down here in this next problem. Let's say we have 8x squared plus 16x. If you say to yourself, sorry, equals 16x. If you say to yourself, gee, let's divide each side by 8x, then you end up getting x is equal to 2, which only has one solution, and there should be two answers because this is a quadratic equation. If, however, you took this 8x squared equals 16x, and you set it equal to 0 as you're supposed to do for quadratic equations, you would then factor out the 8x and have x minus 2 equals 0, and you'd find that there are two solutions of 0 and 2. The point I'm trying to make is the following. You are not allowed to divide both sides of an equation by whatever you feel like. You're allowed to divide both sides of an equation by a constant, but not by a variable, because when you're dividing by a variable, you end up losing or dividing out one of your solutions. On this next problem, I'm going to put the r squared over 1, and then I'm going to multiply through on each side by pi times h to clear the fractions. On the left, the fractions just disappear, and we have capital V, and on the right, we have r squared pi h, and you can rewrite those in any letter form you want. We're solving for h, so we want to divide off the r squared pi. And that would then give us what we're looking for. h on the right is equal to v over r squared pi, or pi r squared if you want to write it that way. This next problem is a little bit different because we have two different w's on the left-hand side that we're trying to solve for. We are going to multiply through by the least common denominator of wn to clear the fractions. And on the left, the denominator just disappears, and we have w minus n. And on the right, you have capital P, wn. And we're trying to solve for w, and since we've got two different w's, I want to get them all to one side. So I'm going to subtract the w that's on the right or left over to the right, and that will give me negative n is equal to pwn minus w. Now I can factor a w out on the right and have pn minus 1, which I can then divide off of each side, and we can have w equals negative n over pn minus 1. 
Now that's one way to write the solution, but I'm not super wild about having that n up in the numerator with a negative, so I'm going to apply the negative 1 technique and show you that you can also write this as positive n up in the numerator, and then if I multiply the denominator by a negative also, that reverses the order of the denominator and we have 1 minus capital P lowercase n. So both of those are perfectly fine ways of writing out the solution to this problem. On number 11, the least common denominator that we're going to multiply through by is r, r1, r2. And we're going to be very careful how we do our cancellation. On the left, only the r cancels, so we have 1 times r1, r2. On, in the middle, on the right-hand side, the r1 cancels, leaving r, r2. And then on the far right, the r2s cancel, leaving r, r1. Now we're solving for r, which shows up in two different places, so on the right-hand side of the equation, we can factor the r out, leaving r2 plus r1, and if you want to rearrange the order of that, that's fine, because addition is commutative. And so we have r is equal to r1, r2, divided by r1 plus r2.